Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Who's Lila, which is kind of a surreal, semi-horror adventure game, a bit like Twin Peaks, where you control all your dialogue over characters by interacting with your facial features and changing your expressions. Quick note that this game is also by the developer of Togochi, which was a very different game, much more anime. Hey, how you doing? It's difficult for me to express my emotions. I envy other people. They make faces naturally. But I have to make a conscious decision each time I move a muscle. Every morning I go to the bathroom to rehearse what my face is going to show today. Broken. Why is it still here? I'm not expecting any calls today. So this does have multiple endings. Apparently this is a pretty long demo. <laughs> Almost like a full game length, so we'll see. When I see Matuchins today, she will ask how I am, like every morning. I will answer good, thank you. Let's alter our face. Yes, this is the, the emotions of a winner. You smiled. Yes, I am smiling, like the mask. If I see a dead dog on the street, I'll make a face like this. Okay. I made an angry face. I was trying to make a, a sad face, but okay. No, that's not the face I make. We like calibrating, calibrating our emotions. There. I should do it. You made a sad face. It's some of their eyes. If some weird guy approaches me at the store, I'll scare him away with an angry face. You mean an angry face. Now that's a face of a winner. If I discover that my sworn enemy died, I'll make... Happy face? Yeah, there we go. You smiled. Right, no need to hide it. If someone catches me off guard of an unexpected call, I'll make this face. How do we make a surprise face? There. Surprised. You smiled. Hmm. Maybe I should try one more time. Super eyebrow mode. There we go. You made a surprise face. There! There is a surprise face. If I once again see the one hiding in boilers. Wait, hiding in boilers? No. There. Scared. You smile. No, that's not smile. That's scared. <laughs> no. Well, that, but that's unlikely, isn't it? I have to take out the trash before going to school. Let me just load up Manly Badass Zero. Haven't appeared there for a while. You have a new task. Throw out the trash. Hey man, why don't you answer the phone they gave you? Anyway, have you heard? Father Lawrence is dead. Meet me at the train station. So are we actually going to mimic the emotions we said at the start?
Pick it up. Who's Lila? Wait, no, that's the name of the game too. Whoops, I just title dropped on accident, unintentionally. Like I wasn't making reference to the title. It was just really a title drop. Raw trash. Okay, what's this? Just trash? Empty piece of box with some crumbs. Crash again. On Saturday afternoon, February 2nd at 1 a.m., a fire has erupted. An apartment building on Cortland Street apartment, unintelligible. Killing all its inhabitants, the apartment was allegedly used by a group led by Mr. La, unintelligible. As the police are investigating the case, access to the site is currently restricted. Hmm. You got a trash bag. You know what the code is. After all, it's my diary. It's an empty glass. It's for farm work. Oh god, these camera angles. Don't know where I'm going. The color scheme makes it kind of confusing. It's like I'm in a dream. A pot of plant. Despite Miss Hutchins' effort, it's dying. Let's talk to someone. Hi, sweetie. Hello, Miss Hutchins. Smile. You smiled. What are you up so early in the morning? Just throwing out the trash, Miss Hutchins. There's been an awful lot of crows near our trash cans. Annoying critters. Are we throwing out bodies? Um. I'm in my way, Miss Hutchins. Take care of yourself, sweetie. A dirty crow. I'm not gonna scare it away. Alright, now I'm ready to go. Grab a bus to school. Go to school. Now we're at school. Great. Now they describe this game as a reverse detective story. And I'm curious what they mean by that. Let's talk to people. You know I cried today. Oh, well, turn your old self? I mean, it's fine. I cry all the time, too. No, no, it's, it's not because of that. Just, you know, I've been meditating for the past couple of months. Today I realized something. Oh yeah, what was it like? Sad? No, I, I couldn't stop giggling, you know? So what was it? It's gonna sound dumb, but like, I know now. That all the thoughts you have in your head are really conflicts. Yeah, the inner monologue and so on. It's like thoughts are arguing in you. Yes, but the thing is, this you is really just these arguments. If you look at them, they disappear. When they disappear, you disappear. Wanna get to soda? I think mean, it creeps eavesdropping. I was actually eavesdropping. The school's layout is so weird. I keep waking up, walking in the same door and ending up in different places. I think that's gonna be literal. An award grant to Pablo Ramirez. Which shown tremendous growth, demonstrated an unusual commitment to learning and academics, led to various obstacles in the end, so on. Award grant to Tanya Kennedy for national recognition to academic excellence and achievement in secondary education. I remember her telling me about this. Too bad I didn't get back to see it back then. Award grant to Martha Jennings. Two more languages by the high school graduation. How about you? Simply, I'll get one too. I just know I have to. Why do girls like Kennedy have it so easily? Or like Martha Jennings? I've heard she's a real airhead outside school, though. Carries a second set of apartment keys in her backpack in case she loses hers. And that's who gets the awards. Hmm. Hey there, buddy. Hey, man. Strange seeing you here. 
<laughs> Fun to decide to catch up on your education? Yeah, kinda. No. You have to figure out this emotion on your own. You mean an angry face. Hey, hey, calm down. <laughs> you know I'm not involved. But I'd try to stay from Mike today if I were you. Let's go in here. Lockers. This locker belongs to Michael Graves. It's locked. Tanya Kennedy is locked. Matthews. He did mention that uh, one of the students keeps their keys in their bag. Hello, fellow teenagers. Well, our college students, I'm not sure where we are. Is that you? Hello, everyone. What the hell do you think you're doing here? Jimmy, wait. Well, where have you been? Where's Tanya? Huh? Tanya? Look, we're automatically making emotions. But I can manual manipulate later if I want. Interesting. You smiled. I'm not joking, Will. She hasn't been answering her phone. She's not at home either. Her mom called us. I think the police are involved or something. Because Martha's at the principal's office right now. Is she? Curiosity? You made a surprise face. It looks strange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you commented I look strange? Look, man, I know we didn't spend much time together lately. But, uh, we really need everything you know about Tanya. Don't be that straightforward about But yeah, the gist of it is, we are very worried about her, Will. Please, can you tell us where she is? It's totally not me... ...putting bodies out of the trash. I swear I don't know. Arthur's known for making up stuff. That's not true. Yeah, easy on the accusations. Look, guys, why are you so bothered by it anyway? Maybe she's need some time alone. Stop smiling for everything! A sad face. Work with me. You look disgusted. This came out insincere. Do you yourself even believe this? You know Tanya for much longer than you do. She's not like that, you know. Maybe you need to chill in her life, live her life, man. Maybe you need to stop fucking around and tell us where she is. Where is Marfa, by the way? That's not important, asshole. Jim, the principal wanted to see her. So, Will, are you saying you don't know where Tanya is? Nope. So Marfa's at the principal's now. I think he's already finished with her. Big Graves said he's been seen on the roof. Oh, right. He wants to see you too, by the way. Anyway, what about... Good. I'll be on my way then. Hey, wait a minute. Will, wait. I have a new task. Find Marfa's classroom. My face is looking a little funky. This is not the place I need to be. Oh, it's part of the thing. Weird. Yeah, they're right. Every time you enter a room, things change. Isn't it like, like scary? I've heard all this destruction of self-talk, but it always sounds kind of creepy and edgy. I want to try Tulpomancy at some point? But the very prospect of losing myself to a Tulpa scared the shit out of me. You know, like Kumar and Ogigi? Oigi. I, I, I feel like I butchered that terribly, so. It's not about destruction, Mandy. All destruction, all pain, honestly comes from this, uh, divide, I guess. The self, I mean. The self is by its essence a divide. The moment you start dividing the inner and the outer problems come. How can you not do that, though? You have your body and mind, so do I. It's so weird that we even do think that way. Inner, outer are just words, honestly. So you have a bubble, and they say it's your bubble, and I have a bubble. And I say it's mine. Uh-huh. And then they both pop, and suddenly it's just the air. How can you say it's my air? Hey, Jay, I think he's here again. Yeah, I know. What the hell does he want? I wonder. I'm just walking around. This might be Mandy? 
Ellie Cooper. Oh, hello. Hey there. So, do we know each other? Wait, weren't you at that party? Um, at Matt's party last Monday. Yeah, we talked th there, remember? She probably means the party at 29271 Fairfox Street. Wow, that was a very accurate person. You were there, but you don't know who this is. Sure, I remember you. I remember- <laughs> That's- That's a welcoming face. You smiled. Ellie believes you. How have you been? Have you heard, by the way, that the girl was with at the party, Tanya, Tanya Kennedy? Nobody seems to know where she is. Is that so? Then what about the diary? Do you remember there was like a book that was locked at the, the um, apartment? I wonder if that was even ours, and if not from... Because I'm assuming we're murdering people, I'm going to be honest. Uh-huh. I've seen the police car outside, and it's a secret, but Martha Jennings at the principal's now. What's her classroom number, by the way? Marfa's? It's... Wait, why are you asking? She's in there right now anyway. I just have to wait for her there. Give a good smile, that'll convince her. You smiled. This looked really weird. Ellie looks almost frightened. I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable talking to you. Could you leave, please? Sure. You feel you won't find out where Martha's classroom is. Well, you don't have any options. It's a demo, so try again. You made a sad face. Something happened between you two? She looks at the gossipy type. You sent upon a show. No, I mean... How could she? She's been avoiding me for all these days. Yes, we broke up, but poor Kennedy's missing. We have to talk. I, I... Wait, you dated? You did not. Oh, but it's a secret. I need to see her. Honestly. Oh, I get it. Of course, of course, I understand. It's 40430. The door near this one, actually. Thanks. You have a new task. Find Marfa's apartment keys and an address. Check the bag. Pack of sanitary napkins. Marfa's keys. Whoops. Accidentally clicked out. Martha Jennings, 12740 Burfwood Street. Give a new task. Talk to Martha on the roof. This is going to be interesting. Martha? Hi. You can trust me. I may make funny faces, but I'm a completely trustable person. Hello, Marfa. You smiled. Marfa looks Ryan. I, uh... What are you doing here, Well, I wanted to talk to you about something, Marfa. Have you been to the principals? No. I know you have. What do you want, Well? I know it was you who was last to see Tanya. That's all. Do you think we don't know what was happening between you and two? Have you talked to the officers yet? Why do you... Answer. Yes, yes I did, but I didn't tell them much yet. I think a certain detective wants to see me tomorrow. Name. I don't remember, he's Asian. Something like Detective Yu, I'm not sure. Anyway, why do you... It's really not good to spread rumors, Marfa. That's a sign of a very, very bad friend. What? What are you talking about? Are you alright? What's going on, William? Well, I'll tell you what's going on, but. Hey, asshole! Oh, hi, Mike. You made a sad face. Mike can see you're a friend of him. I was trying to make an angry face. He relaxes a bit. I've been looking for your freak. Where's Tanya? Oh, and I know that, Mike. Your face remained neutral. Mike's demeanor stays the same. Don't pretend you're tough. Look, if you want me to beat the shit out of you, you better start talking. Calm down, Graves. What are you, a child? 
You do realize you'll get in trouble for violent behavior again. Well, that's new. What are you gonna tell on me? Look, buddy. I don't care much at this point. I'll fucking quit school if it means finding Tanya. Would you go to court, too? The fuck are you talking about? The cops are here. Isn't that so, Marfa? I talked to a police officer today, yes. They must still be here. I said, I don't give a shit. Tanya's gone, and she went missing after she went to your place. Marfa told us. That's not true. I'm just gonna let the, the emotions go. Looks like it's an angry face. You mean an angry face? This looked weird. Mike tenses up. Yeah, right. Where is she, freak? Probably supposed to make a sad face there. I don't even care if she cheated. I... I need to know she's fine first. We didn't hook up, though. Let's make a smiley face and see what happens. You smiled. Mike tenses up. Yeah, that, that makes him angry. Yeah, right, you ass. If I can't see you smiling... Look, man. I don't give a fuck by now. Just tell me where she is. I can't... I can't fucking deal with it. Damn, Mike. Are you okay? You know. I'm really starting to think you really were not the best partner for Tanya. If I had information, I don't think it would be the best idea to share with you, buddy. Mike is furious. The fuck you just said? I just don't think I can trust you, Mike. Just go, scope. Just bury it. You smiled. Mike is pissed. Are you making fun of me? If it is so fucking funny. Look at Freak, I'm giving you one last chance. If you don't. Your stupid friends don't scare me, bro. You've been rambling about beating me up for the last five minutes. But all I see is a barrel bark and no bite. Huh? Oh yeah, punk? Big Graves, why are you listening to him? He's just provoking you. Well, do you want to get hurt? Why are you doing this? Because he's just a chicken. He can't even... Uh-oh. Oh! My legs! Wait. Oh! I think we died. Oops! I just keep making sad faces. I made a sad face. I know, so you scared him, he feels more confident. Just fucking answer, dude. I don't have time for this. You're gonna start talking, or you want me to be like last time? What's with the silent treatment? Spill it, freak. Do you want to get beat? How you want it? Sad face again. You made a sad face. Mike relaxes a bit. Well then, it's in your interest to tell me where the hell my girlfriend is. Did I express myself clearly? Yeah. Well, where the fuck is she then? I don't know. What was that? No, no, raise your eyes. Don't fight me. Sad face. I'm not sure you're aware, William, but I happen to know about the little thing you did with Tanya. Behind my back. I... And the only thing keeping me from tearing your fucking head off is the fact that you knew where she is. Now, do you know where she is? Tell me, buddy. Mike is now sure you're too scared to defend yourself. Keep acting sad. Nope. Nope. Sad face. Well, I guess there's just one thing left to do, buddy. Mike, please wait. Come here, punk. Mike is sure you are defenseless. This is your chance. Whoa! What? Ah, I got a winner. End of demo. So I guess that, that route kind of ends there. But there's probably more routes. Yeah, so losing that encounter was just a death. But winning the encounter... How are they going to continue off that ending in the full game? Like, you just snapped... You just killed the guy on the roof. There's a witness. You toss them both over the edge? 
Okay, so let's try to get through this another route. You smiled, but very friendly. I can see you are trying to pacify him. He relaxes a bit. We gotta talk, man. Well, let's talk then, Mike. Was that why you were looking for me this morning? Where's Tanya? How would I know that, Mike? You smiled. Mike tenses up. Where the fuck is my girlfriend? I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Get that smug ass smile off your face, asshole. First she gets with you behind my back. Next thing I know, she's missing. A whole fucking week, dude. Just give me that you don't fucking know. We didn't have a thing, you know. Keep smiling. Put on your cool face. You smiled. Mike tenses up. You're yeah, right, you ass. As if I can't see you smiling. Look, man, I don't even give a fuck by now. Just tell me where she is. I can't... I can't fucking deal with it. Dad, Mike, are you okay? You know. I'm really starting to think you really were not the best partner for Tanya. Even if I had information, I don't think it would be the best idea to share with you, buddy. Mike is furious. The fuck you just said? Sad. You mean a sad faced. Mike is trying to compose himself. Look, man, I know you've had your issues. Of showing emotions, empathy, and stuff. That we had our differences. But please. You know I love this girl. Please tell me what you know, Will. I don't know anything. Smile. <laughs> you smiled. Mike is even more pissed now. Also, Mike, you talking about differences. I don't think the way you and that your pathetic friends pick at me every time I stumble on you. I don't think the word differences is gonna be a good way to put it. <laughs> For all I know, Tanya may very likely be lying, string on some ditch near school. Whoa! Kinda like Malcolm, you know. Mike looks delirious. You you how dare you? Cute eyes he had, or little Malcolm. But I don't think I'll miss the kid. At the end of the day, you got closer to Tanya because of his death, didn't you? Because you must have been over the moon when he did. I'll kill you! Mike, wait! Oh god, did you throw me off the roof? I think he's alright now, Dr. Hades. A very lucky young man, no. To fall off such a high roof and not even break anything. Was he on drugs? No, blood samples show he's clear. Nothing really. Not even alcohol. I was thrown off! I think he needs rest now. Okay, so... In the one ending, we just outright died. In the other one, we murdered him. And this one... We got beat up, but we survived. A white nightstand is empty, like my soul. A sterile hospital bed. Wow, this is... Yeah. It's very white. Oh, there's some people here. So I've been meaning to ask you... I'm not, like, visually imposing you. Where do you go? Yeah, William is, uh, our protag, so we're seeing, like, a vision. No, there's Lila. <laughs> well, nowhere, really. I just stopped, you know? Being... Oh. Must be really scary. <laughs> not really. You do it all the time, too, Well, When you lose consciousness or when you sleep without dreams. So not existing is like being asleep. It's not really like anything, as there isn't someone for whom it's like something. Not being doesn't really happen to anybody, per se. Well, you just said it happens to me sometimes. There were some dialogues that are kind of hinting at the plot. Like, there was, like, some things about philosophy and tulpas and stuff. So this is a very curious story. It, it's, it's interesting. It's very bold of you to assume that some you... That some you actually exists. Oh, yeah, I get it. Introspective. <laughs> but Lila, you aren't making any sense now. I'm here. To, I'm talking to you. Is that so? And how would you describe that I? Um, I, I don't know, like... 
like I'm young and maybe overanalyzing and, and I really like lemon soda and I broke my knee when I was in kindergarten. So you are your personality and your memories. Is that what you are trying to say? Yeah. That was really interesting. Is each floor going to be a memory? Yes. You see, Will, there's a problem with what you just said. Oh yeah? Yes, let's pretend for a moment you're right. And you really are your personality, memories, and so on. But isn't the one listening to me right now also you? Huh? Sure. And the one seeing me is you, and the one feeling all the different things is you. Let's call this you the Perceiver. Uh-huh. We like to imagine the Perceiver as a pupil of the eye. The Perceiver may cast his gaze upon anything. Colors or sounds, touch of feelings. But how do you imagine looking at itself directly? A mirror. Oh, I wouldn't trust the mirror, my dear William. The ghost on the other side. We only look like us. So right, in that sense it really can't. The people could never see itself, so what? It means that whatever the people can perceive is not it. You can analyze your memories and your personality, yet the real perceiver always stays in the shadows. One of his human names is the Prince. Although he doesn't really have a name, of course. I'm gonna say the Tegochi dev is fairly talented. Because this is a big departure from Tegochi, obviously. But look at, look at like, conceptually how they're able to kind of jump genres and just make something kind of interesting. Although I hope like that Aku thing makes a cameo. In that sense, there isn't really a difference between you and other people I will. You have suddenly become some kind of weird biblical angel. Huh? What do you mean? For you, where do other people exist? I mean their minds, memories, and so on. In their heads? Wrong. You have no ability to see what's inside someone's head. To you people are a fictitious creation, a number of expectations generated from their actions, a phantom existing exclusively in your head. And the funny thing is, your own personality does too. What? I'm real, Lila. Even her people may be imagined by me. My own character is... What's the definition of imaginary? Something that exists just in my mind. And where does your personality reside? I... It's alright, my sweet William. You, your memories, your mind. These are only temporary shards of colored glass. The visioner, the perceiver, the prince, may only look through them and imagine for a moment that he is these shards. He never truly becomes them, and it's surprising how quickly he may look away from one to another. Remember, Will. The moment he looks at another one of them, he might think he's someone different. As you stare at the veil before you, you are filled with emotions of strange nostalgia. The currents flap in the wind, yet you don't feel a drought. A hauntingly beautiful melody can be heard from behind it. For a moment, you can't help but gaze at the shriveling fabric. Go for the veil. Of reality. Oh no, it's first person! Oh god. I can only see out my right eye. An old looking apparatus. Strange, apart from projecting, it looks like it's also somehow receiving its own image. Lila. Huh. So the moon symbolica usually means like you're lost. Sometimes. So there's a moon in the distance, there's a boat. Pylons. It seems like its reels are detachable. Do I get to control? I get to control the boat.
Is there a person there? Hello? They're walking away. Um, there's electrified pylons. This might be bad. In the demo. High Priestess. This one actually doing a major change here. But the ever ending didn't. Hmm. Maybe some endings were more like bad ends than like, yeah. Okay, so we took the projector reel, which had Lila on it. Now let's leave with the projector wheel. Maybe it kind of means like we're taking her with us. Whether she exists or not. What is it be? I'm curious how this game is going to end. Not the demo, but like the actual game. There you are again. I see electrified pylons. This kind of seems like the same. The Fool. So it's pretty much the same ending, but I just took the projector wheel. But it's probably more for a, a route that's going to be in the main game. So you did, like, make a marking here. So let's go down this route. We haven't really been down here. Bullet room's off limits, bud. I'm only joking. Hello, Lila. You guys call again? What's it to you, old man? No reason to be so hostile, Lila. After all, it is you who came here. It's tricky not to get lost in the boiler rooms. With years, you start hearing a divine melody. Flutes and trombones and saxes from beyond. It always comes from a place you seek. Listen for it. Just stand beside each door and listen. <laughs> By the way, what are you planning to do about the lady? The lady that hides in the boilers? Don't talk of what you know nothing about, you old fool. <laughs> so now we need to listen for sounds. This one. No, this one over here. That's good. Only one way to go. Um, there's something following us. Wait, no, that's me. I, I got scared by my own shadow, literally. Wow. I can't tell if we made progress or not. It looks kind of different, but all kind of similar. In this way. Oh god, close your eyes. Wait, no. Don't close them. That's not a lady, that's a giant... Are we alive? I, I don't think so. We think we died. Because it's demo over. Yep. We just died. Close your eyes. Make him extra close. Did we get him close in time? Can we tell our face looks funny? We did. Whew. Time to go off this spiral staircase that goes on forever. This is clearly still part of the school.
Oh my god. We've encountered David Bowie in a David Lynch movie. Lila. What a pleasant surprise. Hello, William. You need to stop calling me on the phone. It's useless. Will, I'll say this once. Your tricks are laughable even with her help. You're not getting back. I have something for you. Please take it. Did you hear what I said? You found a wheel. Interesting. The Wheel of Fortune. So we've got the... Wheel. Projectors here. Take that. You place the wheel. And we put the wheeler instead. Lila must be gone now. That's William. Interesting how we've switched it out. So William, in the machine form, gave us a wheel, a projector, projector wheel basically. If we put it on the projector and took off the Lila wheel, William is here. So does that mean that's who's in control? That's who's being projected? Right now we have Lila's wheel, whether we're actually physically carrying it or not. This makes me kind of understand the one ending then. The fool or whatever, where we just um, took the wheel and left. So we'll ride this. I'm assuming that the ending's mostly going to be the same from this point on. Because it is a demo. But I think the symbolism of what we did there at the projector is the big key part, as I'm saying. Because I am thinking of... I'm thinking very much of Twin Peaks right now. Because you've got a kind of dead missing girl at school that was... Possibly popular, I'm not really sure, but she was known enough in class. Uh, maybe even more than one. And then you've got some odd, otherworldly symbolic things happening. And then taking... Someone's taking my body? Whether they really are or not, that could just be symbolism. End of demo. Yeah, so we got the Hanged Man. It's the achievement that just popped. It's only the beginning of the story. Stay tuned for the full release to learn more about what happened. So that's the current Hanged Man, Death, High Priestess, Fool, and the Wheel of Fortune. So I've unlocked a diary. Um, I, I found the secret number or whatever. I've been helping out a little farm near the Father Lawrence's church. I'm not sure why he needs all those animals for, though. No one from the Brethren seems to be eating them. Yet some animals disappear after some time. Is he breeding and selling them or something? It's confusing. June 14th. This ain't pretty good of Lila's enforcement. Father Lawrence told me not to write her name down. But I rather trust her than him. I think the others may be jealous and she started talking to me so quickly. Part of the page is torn. August 10th. I don't think they know what they are talking about. Topos are a very personal thing. It can't be that their Lila is the same as mine. It's just a part of me. It can't be connected to them. We are not connected. August 12th. She scared me today, by the way. Lila did. She started talking about the prince and stuff. Not the musician. She has her own idea of how things like personalities and egos work. I don't believe her. But for a moment I felt really lost and unsure of what... But my me really consists of. Lila, when you'll be reading this, don't scare me like this again. I'm only becoming kind of unsure about this whole thing. Still love you, though. There's a bunch of pages torn. It can't be. They, they, they just look similar. It's her. I forgot for a time, but I recall her face. It's her. It could not be not her. Today's the day. Today is a day. Weird. So that's it for the Who's Lila demo. I very much look forward to this game. I think it's one of the more unique concepts I've seen. It's it's very bizarre, 
but in a good way. It, it adds to the surrealness, but it's also got this little, little tinge of like creepiness that's kind of beginning there, but it's not quite there yet. We're still very early in the story. So I'm going to talk about some spoilers for Twin Peaks. So basically tune out. If you have not seen Twin Peaks, you want to remain unspoiled. I'm not going to be make, making huge spoilers, but I will be making spoilers for like the first couple of seasons. But Twin Peaks, which is very famous and very influential, obviously, did have another realm. It did have almost kind of like doppelgangers. Usually they weren't physically separate. They were more like possessing you. And it also dealt with tulpas and everything as being almost number of physical entities, but also possessive entities. So without saying who's the culprit, this is that with Twin Peaks. I think this plot is kind of going that direction where we have another entity. Um, the fact that the current William is a big machine makes me think of how a certain character who was formerly played by uh, David Bowie, you know, who passed away before the new season could be made, they turned him into a, a giant like weird tea kettle thing and kind of had like weird pre-record mixed together dialogue for him. The way William appeared there made me think of that. And that's why I'm thinking there's two angles this story goes. It's either, it's all symbolic, it's all surreal, it's representational of something or maybe our mental state, or it's legit. And we're dealing in a very more David Lynchian literal plot line where everything's a little more spiritual about. So the current us is controlled by Lila. William is, like I said, in the other realm, the machine. The person in the boiler room knew of Lila, and then there was also a weird dragon monster thing down there. So the boiler room may not be part of the school. That may be another like dimension. That could be the equivalent like the red rooms, uh, the the red lodge or whatever. Or is it no? I think it's the black lodge of uh, Twin Peaks or the gas station, the convenience store. And you made some interesting choices there at the projector. So the veil is probably going into the mental world, the other side. You go, you go past the veil. And then the projector, it's currently projecting Lila, who we were playing at the time. You took that off, then you would get the ending, the uh, the fool, which could mean either new beginnings, as if there's no one there, or it could mean that we literally are a fool because there's no one at the helm, because we had, there's no projector currently running. And then in the, the more secretive ending, we put William's projector on there, and then projected William's face. In the ending where we just left the projector of Lila there, it was the high priestess, the William one was the hangman. So I think, I think they... The hangman and the priestess basically represent those two characters respectively. So maybe Lila is the culprit. Maybe Lila in control of William's body did maybe a murder. Maybe they just, maybe just the person's missing. And since they jumped personalities, it was William that met the girl and then Lila like took over. So they don't quite know what each one's doing. But the game is described as a reverse detective story. So with the whole thing with the, the trash bags piled up and all the crows and stuff, that's always been a common fictional tale of like people hiding bodies. If you see a lot of crows, it means they're throwing out bodies or something. So we'll see whenever full game releases. Anyway, so thank you all for watching play the Who's Lila demo. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.